What's up guys, welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, today's video is gonna be on how to tune the new uh, Hoyt bows, so like the Ventums and the RX-5s. Before we get into that, uh, just a quick reminder, we still have a bunch of the Inside Out Precision hats available. The link is in the description here uh, of this video. There's one for the gray and white, and then this is the black and charcoal. So if you wanna support the channel, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, we got a lot of things coming moving forward here and uh, any support we can get really helps kind of move those things along at a more rapid pace. So if you like the hats, you know, it's Richardson 112. I love this thing. Um, and yeah, got the got two options right now, probably more coming in the future. Um, but hop in that link below. Um, it'll send you right, right to our PayPal page and uh, we usually ship within, you know, a day or two of getting the order. So really appreciate all the support guys. We've had uh, just, an overwhelming amount of, of gratitude and thanks and you know support over the over the last few months and uh, it's very much appreciated so thank you for that um, so today we're gonna be getting into tuning your new whether it's a Ventum or an RX-5 it's the same cam system but all the new Hoyt bows um, so one thing that we've dealt with a lot is people you know either calling or bringing us a bow that they bought at another shop and you know the rest is like way inside or outside of center and even though it's shooting a bullet hole you know if my rest is way too far outside or way too far inside um you know sometimes you'll run out of adjustment on your sight because your arrow's pointed so far one direction or the the sight if it's too far inside the sight will actually part of it will be blocked by the riser here and you know you don't you don't want that um so because this bow doesn't have split yokes like they had in the past, which are the little, you know, where it comes to the top on either side here, um, we're not gonna be actually leaning that cam to the right or left like we did on, on all the previous Hoyts for the last, like, I don't know, 15 years. Um, so this is their new binary cam system, and it operates on, on a shim kit, basically. So see if I can zoom in on this for you. So you see those little gray spacers on either side of the cam? So it's gonna come stock, top and bottom, with those little gray spacers. You can see them right there. Um, those are what you're gonna to use to actually push the cam one way or the other. So this is really similar to like Matthew's top hat system. Um, and they actually come in two different sizes. So your Hoyt dealer should have like a, a kit, basically. Um, the gray ones are like the medium thick and medium thin, and then they also have the black ones here so the with the black the the thick is thicker than the the gray one and the thin is thinner than the gray one so if I have to move that tear a long way you may be replacing both of these with the black ones um, now it seems to work pretty darn well um, usually if you can't get a, a tail left or right tear out of it with the shim kit there's either something crazy going on in your grip or your arrow is severely under or over spined um, so far with these, you know, like any setup, when we when we start, we're gonna get the rest on there in the up position. You know, we're gonna we're gonna level the arrow just right through the center of the burger hole, which is if you're not familiar with the burger hole, the burger hole is the the hole that the rest mounts in, um, and we want that arrow. You can use a level. You know, I just kind of eyeball it through there, um, and. Honestly, I don't tie in above and below my knock until I get that loop in the position that I need it. Um, sometimes you'll get like a really tail high or tail low tear and moving your loop just a tiny bit will correct a tear a lot faster than moving your rest up and down a lot. Um, so people freak out when they say, oh my gosh, you know, I have, my knock is a eighth of an inch high at brace. And honestly, that doesn't hurt anything if it's shooting if that's where the bow wants to tune that's totally fine so by not tying in my my knock point first it allows me to slide that loop up and down just a tiny little bit to get any high low tear out then once i get a level tear meaning you know the vertical tear is level then i'm going to start playing with the shims to get my horizontal tear in um so you know the only downside to any sort of shim kit well you need to press to tune pretty much any bow um but you're going to need to press you know, you're just gonna remove one of the axle clips here, the little C-clip, pull the axle, and then they have, uh, like I said, you're gonna push the cam in the direction of the tear. So if I'm ripping, let's say, an inch tail right, I'm gonna start by pushing, you know, probably the top cam to the right. So the larger spacer on the left, 
smaller spacer on the right. If that halves it and my bottom one is not pushed to the right yet, I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Um, if I still need to go, if I'm, you know, now let's say that does it and I'm, now I'm only a quarter inch tail right, then I would probably take the black spacers because the, the large black spacer is thicker than the large gray spacer. And I'm gonna start again with the top cam. And I'm gonna push that a little further to the right, shoot it again. If I need to go further, I can do it to the bottom cam. Now, if you get to a point where it flip flops, like I said, you know, let's say I've got both, I've got the gray shims in here and they're both pushed to the right, but I'm still like an eighth of an inch tail right. So I put the black spacers in and it flip flops it. Now I'm an eighth of an inch tail left. You can move your rest a little bit outside of center. That's not gonna hurt anything. Um, obviously, you know, just aesthetically and for people with OCD, it's nice to have that rest centered up, but it's not like, it's not the end all be all to have a rest that's perfectly centered. You might need to run that rest just, you know, a 16th or whatever inside or outside of center. It's not gonna hurt anything. So use the shims to get it as close as you can. Usually you can achieve a bullet hole with just the shims. If you need to go a little bit further, bump that, um, bump that rest a little bit right or left. So before you start all your tuning, like let's say you just pull this bow out of the box, you get the draw length set, you know, you tie on your loop, you get your rest on there. Your first step is gonna be setting the cam timing. Um, so when I put this bow on a draw board and I draw this, you know, and I draw it back, I want the draw stops here on the cams. I want these to come around and hit this cable at the exact same time. Because if one cam is ahead or behind the other, when I shoot, it's gonna pull that, that knock essentially up or down. Um, so if your cam timing is off, let's say my top cam is open, you know, a quarter of an inch, even if my arrow is level, it's gonna throw a knock high tear. Um, you know, conversely on the bottom, usually speak, generally speaking, if your bottom cam is open, it's gonna throw a, a knock low tear. Now it's really easy to fix that, but you do need a press. So let's say my top cam is, is open a quarter of an inch, meaning when I put it in the draw board, my, my bottom draw stop is coming around and hitting this cable before my top one is. What I need to do is put a, I usually start with like a half twist. Um, you know, if it's open like a, an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna put a half turn into the control cable that connects to my bottom cam, okay? So this one right here, I'm gonna put it in the press. If I'm looking from the, the side of the, the string that the loop is on, like I'm looking down the string from the loop, I'm gonna turn it clockwise. If your string rotates to the right, you're gonna turn it clockwise. Um, you know, so always always do that if you're looking down the, down the string from the loop side, that's how you're gonna know, you know, if you're turning it right or left. So you're gonna put a half turn or a turn into the side that's touching first in order to close up the opposite cam. Um, now, if you get there, and I mean, you're just like, you know, a 32nd of an inch off, you're fine. You don't need to mess with it at all. If you put a half twist in, it's just gonna flip flop the issue. Um, generally speaking, if I want one open, I'd rather have my top cam just a hair open than the bottom cam. Um, but that's definitely gonna be an important factor uh, when you start tuning. You know, we gotta, have, we gotta have those cams in time and we want our rest. Again, when you're, when you're, find an arrow here. When your arrow is knocked, you know, I want that arrow running through like the center of that burger hole right there. So you can see that's, that's pretty darn level right there. Now, if I start shooting, let's say I shoot that and I'm a little bit tail low or tail high, sure, you can micro adjust your rest. You don't have to move the, the, the loop, but let's say I'm, I do that and I'm, you know, a half of an inch tail low. Rather than dropping my rest, it takes more movement in my rest to, to get rid of that tail low than it does in my loop. So I would, personally, I would rather raise my knock point like a 16th of an inch or so than drop my rest like 3 16 of an inch. Um, because the more I have to drop that arrow, the more you know it's gonna point at the ground and I'm not gonna get as much distance out of my sight, so on and so forth. So that's why I don't like to tie in above and below my knock until I get 
that level tear. Once I get that level tear, I'll go back and just pull you know, the bottom side of the loop down, tie underneath it. Once that's set, pull it, you know, slide that back up, pull the top knot up, tie above it. And now, now my knock point is tied in and I don't, um, you know, I, cause I know I'm not gonna move it anymore. So it's level, then you can play with the shims. Now, I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of comments that say, you know, oh, my dealer doesn't wanna spend the time to do this. And to be honest with you guys, like, I don't know how to approach a shop. Like if somebody came in here and told me like, we don't know what we're doing, we probably wouldn't take it very well. Um, but pretty much every bow on the market now is using some sort of shim system. PSE, Matthews, Hoyt, uh, Bowtech has their drive system. Elite has you know their limb pocket system and a shim kit. There's very few bows are using the split yoke method anymore. And so if your bow shop is just, either they don't know or they're just being too lazy, you gotta find a new bow shop. Um, it, it's not very time consuming. You know, Hoyt even makes a little tool that holds the spacer for you so you can slide it in there. You're not trying to like, you know, push it in with your fingers or anything. It's this little, it just holds the spacer and it slides right in there. It's got an axle clip, a C clip remover. It's, you know, they should have all that stuff if they're a Hoyt dealer. Hoyt sends us or sent all their dealers that stuff because that's how you're supposed to tune these. So um, let's kind of review that top to bottom. So we pull the bow out of the box. I'm gonna tie on my loop, get my rest on there. Just, you can either use a level or just eyeball it. Get that arrow through the center of the burger hole here, level with the loop. Then I'm gonna put it on my draw board, make sure my timing is on. So again, I'm gonna put turns into the control cable that is hitting first. So if my top cam is open, I'm gonna put turns into my top control cable. If my bottom is open, or excuse me, my t if my bottom cam is open, I'm gonna put turns into the top control. If the top cam is open, I'm gonna put turns into the bottom control. Whichever side hits first is the side that you put turns into. Um, so once I get my cam timing on, I'm gonna go shoot it. Should be pretty level. In my experience with the cam timing on and an arrow that's properly spined, or at least close to properly spined, I'm usually not adjusting much in terms of height. Um, so once I get a level tear, then I can play with the shims to adjust that left and right. And remember, we're pushing the cam towards the direction the arrow is kicking. So if I'm kicking tail right, I'm gonna put the larger spacers on the left and push that cam to, pardon me, to the right. Um, it's really not a very hard system. I mean, a lot of people get freaked out when, you know, you start talking about pulling cams off and swapping shims, but it's literally how this bow is designed to shoot. So I hope that answers a lot of your questions. Um, honestly, I'd love, if I had the time right now, I would love to do a whole video where I'm actually doing that, but I am like insanely crunched for time. Um, I gotta get this to my editor, who's also like in grad school and you know, it's finals right now. So we're just, I don't have enough time to spend another, you know, 45 minutes like setting up the camera and showing every little step, but all that stuff should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, so I hope that helps tune in your new bow. These Ventums have been super, super popular as have the RX-5s. Um, I know Hoyt's a little slow right now. Everybody's backed up. About the only bow we can keep in stock is Matthews right now. Um, we've got a few of these in and they pretty much are either spoken for when they come in or they're gone in you know three days after being on the shelf. So definitely a popular bow this year. Um, if you haven't caught my review on that, definitely go check it out. And uh, yeah, it, it shot cool speeds. It's, it's kind of crazy with the, with the module system. I'm not gonna give it away, but you know, it actually shoots faster at a shorter draw length sometimes than it does at a longer. So um, anyway, if you've got any questions, guys, hit me up in the comment section below. Uh, remember, precision is the decision, and I'll see you on the range.